Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome to Cassandra Elizabeth Love and Fitness, home of the 20 minute workout, sometimes longer, sometimes shorter, barefoot, pain free training, meditation, cat hair, <laughs> lots, lots and lots of cat hair. And I just swept, I sweep all the time. Let's get down to static back. Static back town. <laughs> Is that corny? Use the wall if you don't have a chair, ottoman, or bench. I'll do the talking, you do the deep breathing. In through your nose, out your mouth or your nose. Take a moment and place one or both hands on your belly. Refrain from interlacing the fingers. Separate your hands so they're not touching. We're aiming for symmetry and even crossing the fingers creates a slight asymmetry. We want symmetry versus asymmetry. So you can take one or both hands in the belly to just feel your belly rise and fall with the breath. And as you're breathing, you're feeling the back of your head connected to the floor, the earth. You notice that the neck doesn't touch the floor, but you can feel the bones of the cervical spine, which is the neck, coming downwards towards the earth. Then you feel the connection of your upper back against your mat or the floor. And you travel downward and at some point you might feel a little curve. The lumbar spine is naturally curved as well, just like the neck. So it may or may not touch the earth, but you can get a sense of all those bones coming down as a result of gravity's force. And then of course you feel your tailbone, that flat surface. Touch your glutes for just a moment. Make sure that they're not tightened up. Relax the cheeks, if you will. Slide around. Allow your inner thighs to relax, even if that means your legs open up a little bit. That's okay. Completely give in to the position. In the case of your feet being against the wall, you know, obviously you want to keep them against the wall in that angle, but relax a little bit, even if that means they open up a little bit as well. Just let go and breathe. <sighs> okay, so let's take another deep breath. This exhalation, the next exhalation, will permit you <laughs> to bring your knees into the chest. So breathe in, and then exhale, drawing your knees one at a time into the chest. And then you'll breathe in and out a few times as you just rotate side to side gently. I'm going to roll over towards you in a moment. The top leg will extend out naturally and the elbow that will be closest to the floor I can use to push up, right, and get myself to a seated position. So I'm going to roll, I'm going to exhale and kick the leg out and come up. Another deep breath in. Exhale. Bring that leg around. Inhale, little exhale, and rise. And you don't necessarily have to breathe with that intensity on your way up. I'm just giving you some suggestions as to when maybe you could choose to breathe out. If you're not used to those big deep breaths, sometimes you can get dizzy. So as you're standing up, if that deep breath does cause you to get dizzy, then refrain from that big deep breath and just breathe naturally. And then rise and rotate the hips right and left allowing your arms to flop against the body because they're not rigid, right? They are just relaxed. The knees are relaxed. They're following the cue of those pelvic bones, right? The pelvic bones are going right and left. So the knees bend a little bit and then the ankle twists, thus the foot will tip in and out as you can see from my bare feet. A single ankle mobilizer, this is a double ankle mobilizer, a single ankle mobilizer is essentially the same thing. This is the action I will do. Hips are going to go right and left. What you're going to see is rather than my shoulders be loose, it's going to be now 
the leg itself because I'm going to relax at the hip joint. So I'm going to place my hands at about chest level at the wall and I'll begin rotating right and left. The purpose will be to mobilize this ankle that's going to be on the earth. Now I'm going to rotate right and left and then I'm going to pick this foot up and I'm just going to allow the whole leg to swing or to sweep. Notice the difference between my hips moving right and left like that was and me moving the leg. Here I'm moving the leg. That's not what we want to do. Relax the leg and move the hips. And if I move the hips with really a great deal of momentum and fervor, look how high this leg will swing out to the side. If I do it gently, then it's going to be down here. Now I'm going to look down and I'm going to see that my right foot is tipping and the right ankle is swiveling. And that's a good sign of a healthy mobile ankle. I'm going to do the same thing for the other ankle. Hands about chest level at the wall just for support. I'm going to be able to rotate at the hips thus there might be some movement up here. And then this leg now at the hip joint is going to be loose just like my shoulders are when we stand stationary. So I begin to rotate, I pick the foot up off the earth and it sweeps. Now I don't want to bend my, or sorry, I don't want to whack my knee against the wall so I might put a small bend in the knee just so I don't whack my foot. And remember with greater momentum there's going to be a greater leg sweep, less momentum a smaller leg sweep. I look down, I can see that my left ankle is rotating and the left foot is tipping. I'm good to go. Okay, got 10 to 30 seconds on both sides. Let's reach all the way up. Inhale, exhale, hinge at the hips and reach up again as you breathe in. Good. Exhale, one more time in place, getting ready to crawl out. Are we ready? Inhale, your pace. Get ready, you're going to hinge the hips, walk out to our up dog into child's pose. So you'll crawl out, hips come down, up dog, breathe out when you're ready, child's pose. Come forward, we're going to kick a leg up to the sky, one leg, bring the heart over the thumbs, elbows flex that dragon tail, one more up dog, this time down dog. Walk hands back to meet the toes. Heels drop, tailbone drops, we inhale, rise. Exhale, hinge and rise again. Inhale. Good. This time we'll walk out. So hinge, walk out. Move the belly as you breathe, my friend. Drop the hips down, breathing in. And exhale into child's pose. We come forward and we kick the other leg up. We bring that heart over the thumbs. We bend the elbows, dragon tail, up dog, tuck toes, down dog. Walk hands to meet the toes. Drop the heels, drop the tailbone, rise, inhale, exhale. Hinge as you exhale and rise again, breathe in. Good. Now think of the action of a saw going forward and back. If you were to, you know, saw a log, right? So I'm going to use that image. I'm going to crawl out. I'm coming forward. Here's the saw going forward. I saw back into child's pose. I saw forward knee plank. I saw back into three-legged dog. That one leg comes up. I look ahead, sawing forward essentially, flexing elbows, heart between the thumbs, up dog, saw backwards, down dog. Walk hands to meet the toes, heels connect and rise. Does that make sense? We're using that forward and back momentum to get us through this routine. Exhale, hinge, rise, inhale when you're ready. Hinge and prepare to walk out. And we're moving that body forward. I'm going to drive the hips. The arms have to move because the hips are going forward. Now my hips pull back. My hips go forward and my hips go back. One leg comes high to the sky. My hips come forward 
and they come down to the earth. We come up, hips go back. Walk hands to meet the toes, the heels connect, drop. Are you with me? Say yes. Let's do it again. Hinge, exhale, inhale, rise. All right, you'll exhale, hinge, and walk out again. Give yourself some wrist circles as needed, any point in time. Don't forget the wrist circle to keep good fluid going on around those small bones and supportive structures of the hands and arms. All right, up dog, back it up, child's pose. Come forward, bring the leg back and up. Come forward and down, and bring yourself up and back up and high. Good. Walk hands back to meet toes, heels drop, and we rise. Hinge, exhale, inhale, rise. Exhale when you're ready and prepare to walk out into your up dog. Forward momentum, hips going, hips drive, hips drive, up dog. Hips back it up, child's pose. Hips forward, mini plank. Hips back, leg up. Hips forward, heart over thumbs, come down. Up dog, hips up and back, walk hands to meet toes. Drop heels, drop tailbone, rise, good. Let's go ahead and do some wrist circles together. If you haven't done any, you're gonna do a few with me now, please and thank you. And reverse the circle, good work. Take a moment and I want you to inhale with a relaxed wrist. Exhale, push something down. So I'm doing a lot of work in the pool this summer. I'm really having fun in a swimming pool. I love to be in the water. And I want you to imagine, excuse me, I want you to imagine that you're in a pool that's about navel or torso deep. Your chest is out of the water. You're very safe. So if you're not a swimmer, don't worry, you're fine, you're safe, you're grounded, okay? And you're gonna picture that the arms are gonna float up as you breathe in, and then as you exhale, you're pushing water down. Good work, now I'm gonna bring my body forward, and I'm gonna come back a little bit. And as I come forward a little bit, the hips go back, good. One more time, just that forward breathing in, Exhale, push things all the way down, 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 down. Bear crawl forward and back for me. All right, just bear crawl forward. Good, and back, nice. Now flip her over, give me a little crab walk. Crabs walk sideways, right? <laughs> they do a little sideways thing. Can you go sideways? A little bit, a little bit. Flip over, give me my mini burpee, my mini burpee. I'm back a little bit, and then I'm up. I come down, I just step back a little bit, and back up. Make sure that you switch the lead leg, so if you step back left, and then you're gonna step back on the right. Good. Let's do two more times, stepping back right, and left. One more time, stepping back left to right. Good, come all the way up. Let's come back down, and you're gonna give me some good old fashion bicycle crunches. Eight times, seven, six. I'm supporting the head and neck with one hand. Four, three, two, and one. Let's roll over. Let's come all the way up. Using momentum, breath, and all those good tools that this amazing machine has to offer. We're alchemists. Our body is this amazing chemistry, chemistry set, right? We breathe in and we convert oxygen into carbon dioxide. Isn't that crazy, right? We breathe in. We breathe out. Good, find that rhythm. Breathe in and out. Good, now lift your toes up, find maximum stability. Good. If you were to relax the belly right now 
and do a few bicep curls. How does it feel with the weight load you have in your hands? With the same weight load, brace the abs. Continue to breathe. I don't mean to hold your breath. Brace your abs as if someone was going to give you a friendly punch in the gut. How does that feel? And then finally, just find natural movement with your breath as best you can. And let's get ready to take one arm at a time and go up overhead. Here we go, up overhead, all the way down. Other side, up overhead, all the way down, good. Come up overhead, and all the way down, good. Overhead press, and down, good. Three more each side, overhead press, good. Two more, overhead press, and we've got one more to go on each side, one more time. Use any natural rotation that occurs in shoulder, upper back, okay? Utilize your rotator cuffs. They're there for a reason. All right, bicep curl. Two arms are going to come up, up overhead, and then give me a squat. Good. Bicep curl. Two arms overhead, and give me a squat. Excellent. Two arms up overhead, right? So you're bicep curling to get those arms up overhead, right? It's natural. Bicep curl, and then you press. Perfect, elbows extend, palms up, elbows bend, shoulder, upper back presses, and as a result, the arms, thus the hands will move. You're not waving at the wrist. The wrist is attached to forearm, attached to elbow, attached to upper arm, attached to shoulder rotator cuff complex, two more. So it's an upper back, shoulder, that's doing all that busy work. One more time. Good. Take a quick break. And what are we gonna do? We're gonna start where we left off with, drum roll please, bicycle crunches. Let's get down. Get down on the side that is not the most comfortable. If you already got down, that's okay. Next time, get down on what I'll call our non-dominant side, <clears throat> okay? All right, you only get to do eight, so do them well. Hey, my speed monsters, I'm talking to you, slow down. I want full extension at the hip flexor, full extension at the knee. And we're not jamming the leg in space, we're gently extending and pulling in. I think it's three or four more on each side. I'm supporting my head and neck. I'm breathing out and so are you. Two more on each side. Are you ready? Here we go. Say yes. One more time each side. All right, I want you to get up on your non-dominant side. Get up on the non-dominant side and give me a little bear crawl. Your bear crawl can have straight knees or bent knees, right? What's gonna work for you? You can spin her around. You can bear crawl side to side. Speaking of side to side, let's come down for crab walk. Crab walk is primarily a side to side movement if you can do it. If it's awkward, then just move wherever you can. Don't slam your tailbone on the floor if you need a break. Contract abs and set tailbone down on the floor if you need that break. Give yourself some wrist circles. Let's finish with our mini burpee. I like to do some wrist circles on the way up and a little down and up. Now you want to do full full fledged burpee. Put in a push up right here. Clap your hands. Jump. It's all you. Or you're with me in the mini burpee, which I love. <laughs> I do. I do. I do. One more time. One more time. Bottom. Bottom. Good work. Deep breath in, let it out. Grab them weights. Do you want to go up in weight or down in weight? Bicep curl, round two. Good, good, good. Now, right away, let's go all the way up overhead. 
Good. Come all the way down. Give me a squat. Other side. Bicep curl. Come up overhead and give me a squat. Let's do it again. One arm at a time. All the way up. And down. Good. And up. And down. Two more, just like this, on each side. One more time, just like this, on each side. Now we're going to get ready to step all the way back. So I'm going to bring one arm up overhead again. Here we go. Are you ready? Here we go. All the way up. Squat down. Step back. Low row. One arm at a time. Can you do two? That would be amazing. Step up. <laughs> Other arm is going to come up. Come down. Step back. Low row. One arm at a time. Step up. One arm comes up overhead. One squat. Step back. Low row. Good. Other arm comes up. Single arm all the way up. Now hinge at your hip joint. Let the weights come slightly in front. Squeeze shoulder blades, bend the elbows. Kick it back. Tricep. One arm at a time. Eight. Good. Seven. Six. Oh, yeah. Five. Good. Four. Three. Two. One more each side. One more each side. Good. Get ready. We're going to stand all the way upright. Step back. Split squat. Good. Same side. Same side now. Stay here. Good. Six. Five. Four. Three. I'm pushing off this forward heel. Lifting forward toes up. One more. Step forward. Both feet come together. Other foot behind, and we go. Eight, and lift. Seven, driving forward heel. Six, five, come on. Four, three, two, one more, one more. Step feet together. Good work. Take it from the top. Press up. One full squat. Down and up. Good. Press up. Come all the way back now. Low row. One arm at a time. Good. Step up. Bring those weights close. Hinge forward. Try to say kick back. One at a time. Good. Upright. Step back right and left. Good. From the top, overhead press. Full squat, down and up. Overhead press. All the way down, low row. Good. Bring the body up, up, up. Weights close to the body as you come up. Hinge, kick it back. Stand upright, step back. Good. Weights down, weights down, burpee, up, step it back, up, step it back, up, step it back, up, take it down, bear crawl, bear crawl, bear crawl, bear crawl, forward and back, turn around, Legs straight, legs bent. You decide. Let's take it down. Crab. So give me at least two side to sides. Two side to sides. Bicep 
bicycle crunch. Let's do it. Bicycle crunch. Eight. Seven. Six. Counting down five. <sighs> Counting down four. Stay with me. Come on. Counting down three. Counting down two. Counting down one more. Non-dominant side. Non-dominant side. Get up. Pick up your weights. Picking up from your lunge, your split squat or your split lunge. Weights up here, heavy, medium, light, you choose. So option one, gonna put the ball of the foot down, the knee's gonna drop, and I'm stepping forward and back. Good. Option two, as you know, ball of foot, knee drop. Option three, one leg holding stationary for future You'll know how many you've done. If you're with me and you've done this little sampler, let's do a couple more stationary on this side together. We'll switch sides now. Are you ready? So I think it's five and five. We've done stationary together. We began alternating, and you can always do stationary like so. Two more. Are we ready? We're going to go tricep kickback. Legs apart. Hinge at the hips, shoulder blades engaged one at a time. Let's take it home. Good. Head, neck, check. Look up and down until you find comfort. There should be zero sensation in your back. Zero sensation in the neck. We should be feeling some good heat in the back of the arm. Lift toes up, weight in heels. Moving the belly as you breathe or you find a bracing technique with breath, what works for you. Let's take it home, take it home. How about three more on each side? A one. Come on. A two. Oh yeah. And a three. Beautiful job, beautiful job. Unhinge. Set those weights down. Nicely done. Take a deep breath in. Grab a hold of your forearm of one arm and give me a little side bend for one, two. Same thing, other side. I'm going to come up, grab the forearm very gently, lift it up towards the ceiling, and a small side bend. One more like that on each side. All right, let's bring our hands behind us. Just start like so. Okay, just like so, and just hold for a moment. Just hold this position. Hold this position. Now, can you bring one arm on top and come closer? Can you switch it? We're not forcing. If, those, if this position isn't comfortable, just stay in the very beginning, like we did just here, okay? Now, can you clasp your hands together? Clasp the, rather, clasp the fingers together first. Then some of you can close the hands together. I'll stay with my fingers. And then can you just lift up barely, just a hint, so you start to feel that stretch and it's comfortable and you can breathe. There's no agitation, there's no jerkiness. You don't have to retreat out of the position. If you feel that need, you've gone too far, so come out of it, lower the hands down, if you will, right? Bring them back down versus go up higher. Don't go up higher if it's, it's too much. We are not into pain here, you know that. Bring the hands down so the thumbs touch your bottom and you're gonna pull your shoulders forward that's going to make my back come forward. Then I'm going to bring my hands apart. Good. One ear to one shoulder. And rather than look down, I'm going to try to just bring my eyes up towards the ceiling while this ear comes towards the shoulder. Now I'm going to retract just a little bit. Just a little bit. Not too much, but so often we're here. Just pull back a little bit. 
tighten up the abs, breathe out, center for a moment, and then finally other ear, other shoulder, okay, eyes upwards, and a very small retraction, which isn't looking up, you're not really moving the neck so much as you're pulling your head back and you're making that double chin. And then I'm going to contract abs, center my head, and mwah, 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 mwah. thank you so much. Keep breathing, keep stretching, keep lifting, and most of all, keep loving yourself, and I'll see you next time.